Hello YouTube, this is Marco. I'm your Watch Cardinal bringing you another video today. Another collection review for somebody whom I consider a friend. His name, of course, as you well know if you are uh, in this community, is Tony Nico. And uh, looking forward to reviewing this collection. Before, of course, I begin a quick wish watch check. What am I wearing? I'm wearing the 2 Chains Bruce Wayne. That's right, guys, 2 Chains Bruce Wayne. So let's just jump straight into the video. Now, Tony's been collecting now for a couple of years, and uh, this is the cor collection currently as it stands. In terms of the watches with uh, sentimental value, the bluesy was a retirement gift for himself. Note 8 Sub and the Win Wimbledon dial also have uh, some personal sentimental value attached to them. The 6006 was a 40th birthday present. Very nice. The Pepsi is a birth year watch for his son with his exact birth date on the cards, which is pretty damn cool. He's also a lucky purchaser of the Ming 1709 like myself, who I also bought a Ming 1709 in blue, but he got both the blue and the burgundy, which is, you know, pretty damn cool. And he said he previously owned a Grand Seiko, but he gave it away to a gentleman he met on a family holiday who was a second generation watchmaker for Seiko. Man, I must applaud your generosity. That is extremely kind and generous of you. And uh, man, it just goes to show you the kind of person you truly are. So in terms of the other watches he owns, he owns a Patek Philippe, the 5170R. I mean, what is there to say about that? Unbelievable, unbelievable watch. I mean, a true grail. A JLC Reverso, an Explorer, and a Hulk. Now, this is a great 10-piece collection, unless we forget he's also getting uh, two additional minks. But I do have a little bit to say about this collection. While I do love it, and I think that it is, I mean, truly a remarkable collection, I think there lacks a little bit of a personal touch of you in this collection, you know? All of these watches in the collection, apart from, I would say, the 5170 and the 6006, are, I mean, rather obvious choices, right? They're, they're, they're things that you see in a lot of people's collection. And I don't mean that in a bad way because they're absolutely incredible watches. But when I think of you, I don't think inside of a box. I don't think, you know, like your average collector. When I think of Tony, I think of somebody who thinks outside the box, who's hardworking, diligent, and likes to think about things from a different perspective from everybody else. And that's the grain in which I'm gonna kind of um, provide my, my, my kind of collection review and uh, ultimately provide the suggestions with which I feel uh, your collection should go. So, uh, and again, I think that it is a, an amazing collection. I just wanna reiterate that. I think that it is a beautiful collection and you can choose or not choose to go in the direction that I would take you, but this is just my personal opinion. As you know, I like to add my little flair to things. So that's kind of the vein I want to take your collection in. So the watches that I, I believe are keepers are first and foremost, the bluesy, because obviously it was a retirement gift for yourself. You can just uh, flick that away. And I think it is a beautiful watch and a, a true icon, you know, kind of in the making. The bluesy has been around now for a little while. So I think it already is an icon, but I think that is an amazing watch. I would definitely keep that. The Note 8 Sub, I would keep also because it's just a beautiful wine and wear watch. And it's just so simple, under the radar, super classy. The clasp is amazing. And uh, yeah, there's not really much else to say about it. I mean, the Note 8 Sub is truly an icon from Rolex. And, um, you know, it's just a perfect under the radar wear. And again, it has some sentimental value attached to it. I think that's a definitely keeper. Of course, the Pepsi. I mean, that's a surefire uh, keeper just for the fact that it has the exact birth date of your son. It's a birth year watch, which is pretty damn incredible. Your son is going to have a heck of a, a head start in his collecting journey himself. So, man, that is a great watch and definitely a keeper within the collection. I think you should also be keeping the Hulk. I think that, yes, Hulk prices are very crazy, but if you were to get rid of it, even though it doesn't have the kind of sentimental value attached to it like some of the other pieces, I think if you get rid of it, you'll probably never get another one because you'll just be like kicking yourself and really regretting uh, getting rid of it. So I would definitely keep the Hulk. I think that besides the kind of rare vintage models from Rolex in terms of the Submariner, I think the Hulk will end up being probably the most desirable Submariner ever. I think that it is truly special and unique in every single aspect from its dial and its its kind of case, the 40 mil uh, maxi or super case. You've also got the maxi dial, you've got the uh, green dial, you've got the green bezel. So I really think it is truly unique 
and I think a surefire collectible in the future, going to be one of, if not the most collectible Submariners, apart obviously from the very rare vintage references. So I would definitely keep the Hulk. The 6006 and 5170, I mean, what to say about those watches, they are super grails. I mean, just incredible watches. Definitely ones that should be staying uh, within the collection, and I think that are definite keepers uh, within this collection. I mean, the 6006, if I could identify any watches being you as, you know, kind of outside the box, as really thinking differently from what the average collector thinks of, I think that the 6006 really encapsulates who you are as a person and where I feel you should take your collection. So I think that's a beautiful watch, definitely should stay in the collection. And the 5170, I mean, manual wine chronographs from Patek Philippe are the grail of grails in any collection. And I think that is a surefire winner right there and definitely a keeper within the collection. Now, here's where it gets kind of interesting and um, where I would start providing you with some recommendations. So the Ming 1709, both in blue and in burgundy, I would definitely keep those. I think they have a really interesting and cool story attached to them, as you well know. Um, and they're just cool, fun watches that are a bit quirky and different from, you know, your average watches in the watch industry. And that's what I really like and respect about Ming. I think that they're doing their own thing and they're really not trying to replicate or be like anybody else. And I think that is truly commendable from Ming. And they're definitely watches that I would be keeping but I wouldn't consider them as part of your rotation. I would say stay confined to that 10 watch collection and uh, that you have currently, but just consolidate and upgrade what you have. The Mings, maybe you can have like a separate box with a couple of Mings and Seikos that you can play around with and have fun if you so well please, but I would really recommend staying Rolex and up in terms of the horology and the kind of, um, I guess you can say the, the level of of execution and finishing and appreciation from the overall watch industry. So, so Rolex and up. So again, in terms of the keepers, just to reiterate, we're keeping the Bluesy, the Note 8 Sub, the Pepsi, the Hulk, the 6006, and the 5170. Now, the first watch that I would replace is the Wimbledon Datejust. Now, I know it does have sentimental value attached to it, um, not only in your personal life, but you also are a big fan of tennis. You're an avid player as well. And so that Wimbledon dial does speak to you. But again, I think you're at a stage in your collection where, you know, I want to consolidate and just upgrade the pieces that you have currently. And I think the Wimbledon Datejust uh, should definitely be added uh, or upgraded rather to, I think, what is the flagship model of Rolex, which is, of course, the Day Date. Now, in terms of what Day Date to get, I think all of them are frankly winners. So you can't go wrong with anything in rose gold, yellow gold or white gold. Now, personally, what do I think is the best option for you? You do have like a slightly more kind of tan skin color. So I think that rose gold is just going to pop on you. It's going to look so great. So obviously, ideally, you would get the rose gold olive dial, the, the anniversary model. But those are so difficult to get and they're going for crazy, ridiculous premiums on the secondary market. What I would actually suggest to you is just a simple rose gold with a white dial, I think it looks absolutely incredible. It's got those rose gold Roman numerals. It's got rose gold hands as well. I think that will really pop and look beautiful within this collection. I think it will really fit in. And I think the rose gold case and, and, and bracelet will really suit your kind of more olive skin tone a lot better than it would most people. So I think definitely rose gold data is the way to go for you. And again, I, in an ideal scenario, I would go rose gold all the dial just because it is the rarest and I think definitely one of the coolest, if not the coolest day dates ever made. But I would say uh, definitely go with the rose gold silver dial. It's a little bit more attainable, uh, not just on the secondary market, but I'm sure at an AD as well. And I think also it is just a beautiful watch that will suit you to a T. So I think that would be a great pick. Next is uh, the Explorer. So I would replace the Explorer. I mean, these 39 millimeter Explorers are going for crazy money now on the secondary market. And frankly speaking, I would take advantage of this current hype of the discontinuation and get something that's a little bit better horologically speaking. And listen, I like the Explorer. I think it's a great watch. It's a watch I wanted to own myself, but realistically speaking, would you ever really choose it over a bluesy, over a day date if you so well pleased to upgrade it or the date just that you have currently would you choose it over the note 8 sub would you choose it over the hulk over the pepsi i mean i'm of the opinion that i don't really think so if i'm being honest with you the explorer is a great watch but 
you know, we have a head, heavy heading watch collection and the Explorer is a great watch for somebody who wants kind of a one and done Rolex. That's just perfect, usable, great in every scenario. And you have a Note 8 sub for that and you have padded dress watches that's great for the dress. And again, usable, utilitarian sports watches. You have Submariners that I think are fit the bill perfectly. You have a GMT and the Pepsi that is a great travel watch. So I just think the Explorer doesn't really fit within the context of this collection. And that's why I would really capitalize at least currently on the, the hype of the discontinuation of the 39 millimeter model. And I would get something to upgrade the Explorer. And the model that I consider would be a GMT, something from a Holy Trinity brand that I think is still relatively accessible considering obviously uh, what the other models of this collection uh, go for on the secondary market. And that is the Vacheron Overseas Dual Time. And the one I would get in particular, obviously in an ideal world, is the blue dial. I think it would be a perfect yin and yang with your Submariner, the bluesy, and the Vacheron Overseas in the blue. I think that's a beautiful watch. It will suit you to a T. And I think that's a great travel watch as well. So it would be a watch that once the borders kind of reopen, you can really bond with on a on a level that is above surface level. You would really come to appreciate uh, that watch. And I think it is ideal also for the climate in which you live in. I mean, obviously you live in Australia, it's warm and humid the majority of the year. And that's a watch that you can not only put on a metal bracelet, but you can also switch to a rubber band or a leather band as you well please on the fly and adjust it on the go. So I think that kind of versatility would really be great for the collection. And I think it would really be a watch that you would come to appreciate greatly. So that would definitely be a watch I would consider adding over the Explorer. So replace the sub, or excuse me, replace the Explorer with the Vacheron Overseas uh, dual time with the blue dial. Next would be the JLC Reverso. Now, again, the JLC Reverso I think is a great watch, but it doesn't really fit in this collection. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, you have a beautiful 6006, which I would choose any day over a Reverso. I'm sorry, just frankly speaking. And a 5170, which again, same kind of thing. I would choose any day to wear over a reversal. So I just don't think the reversal really makes sense, at least currently in the context of this collection. I think I would definitely be looking to upgrade it. And the model that I would really replace it with is something that's a little bit different, quirky and unique. And it's something that is a little bit skeletonized. So you get to see the, the open work of the movement. And the, the model that I'm thinking of is the Breguet 7097. So I would love for you to get it in rose gold with that lovely anthracite back. I mean, it's just a beautiful watch, the 7097. It's got that retrograde seconds that flicks back down at 60 seconds and then goes all the way up and then flicks back down again. I think it's a beautiful movement. The finishing itself is what you would expect from Breguet. In fact, it's even what you would come to expect from a lot of the independents. I mean, they even polish the individual gear wheels on the open gear train that you can see on the dial. So. I think that the Breguet 7097 would really stand out in this collection. It's a little bit different, unique, not what every collector has. And again, I think it would really suit you to a T. I think that the Breguet 7097 would just look stunning in this box. Really, really nice. And again, it would be a point of difference from your 6006, right? The 6006 is in a precious metal and white gold black dial. I would get the Breguet with a white dial anthracite back, rose gold case, and you would have a perfect, what I feel, two-piece kind of dress watch uh, collection in that. So that's definitely the model that I would be going for if uh, you ask me. Now, last but not least is a 10th and final watch. So this one was actually a little bit uh, difficult for me to recommend. It's usually the last watch that's always the hardest. And, you know, I thought a lot about it. I was going to recommend you, at least initially, a... Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Chronograph. The reason being is that obviously you would have, if you follow my uh, kind of suggestions, you would have the Padex, you would have the Vacheron Overseas Dual Time. And so the natural idea is just to kind of complete the Holy Trinity and get an AP Royal Oak Chronograph. And the reason I would say a chronograph is because you would be replacing obviously your Omega Speedmaster in this case. And listen, again, while I feel a Speedmaster is a great watch, I just don't realistically see you choosing it over your Rolex watches or over, you know, your kind of Patek 5170. Again, I respect it and admire it for its place in history and its place in horology, but I just don't think that it fits uh, kind of in this collection in the same way that the Reverso doesn't. So 
you know, I thought about about saying, let's go the safe route, let's go the obvious route for the Royal Oak Chronograph, but man, those are so dear. They're so expensive on the secondary market. And if I'm being completely honest with you, I don't really know if they're worth the premium that they sell for. Again, I've never really handled for a significant period of time. I've seen Royal Oaks and Royal Oak Chronographs in person. And, um, you know, they didn't blow me away. I didn't think, wow, I would be paying mega premiums for this. You know what I mean? They are great watches, but I think that there's some things that are out there that would really suit you to a T. And so I fell back kind of on what I love, which as most people know, is the independence. I love independent watchmaking. And I think a brand that would really suit you is H. Moser and Company. And the, the model I'm thinking about in particular is the Pioneer. And the Pioneer is a great watch because it's kind of their steel sports model uh, from Moser. You can get it both on a leather and a rubber strap. It's not super expensive. David SW has one right now for about 17,000 Canadian. Again, it's a rugged, durable watch, but that's finished beautifully. Uh, they came in three different dial variation. There's the red, there's the blue, and the green. And much to the surprise of a lot of people, I'm sure, in this collection, I think that the green one would actually fit perfectly. You would have the two-piece blue, right, with the Blue Z and the Vacheron Overseas Dual Time, and the two-piece green with the Hulk and the H. Moser Pioneer. And in the Pioneer, I think you get a super versatile watch. It's one that you can dress up. It's one that you can dress down. You put on a leather strap, you dress it up. A rubber strap, you dress it down. And it would be perfect, again, for the climate that you live in, right? Getting it on a rubber strap, it'd be a beautiful daily wear, not something that you see on most wrists. In fact, not something that you would probably see on any wrist. It would be so rare for you to see it unless you're at an actual watch meetup. And I think it would suit you to a T. It would really become one of your most worn and appreciated watches because it's different, but beautifully made, beautifully crafted, and I think definitely worthy and uh, not just worthy of this collection, but a worthy upgrade for the Speedmaster. So those are my suggestions. Uh, ultimately, of course, you can feel free to disagree with me down in the comments below. I would love to know your thoughts. And uh, of course, I would appreciate any feedback on the video and my suggestions. While also, I invite you guys to provide some suggestions of your own. Guys, I want to thank you all for reaching the end of this video. I want to thank Tony for submitting his collection for review. If any of you guys would like to get your collections reviewed, of course, my email is watchcardinal99 at gmail.com. I'd be happy to do these kind of collection review videos for you guys. So stay tuned for more videos in the future. Of course, I kindly ask you to like the video, to subscribe for more in the future. And guys, my name is Marco. I'm your Watch Cardinal, and I'll see you guys in the next one.